A uh, little bit something about me. I recently turned 40. Let me tell you something about turning 40. When you turn 40, you will hear this in your life and hopefully the rest of your life. You look good for 40. <laughs> you look good for 52. You look good for 63. You never hear that when you're young. You never hear, eh, you look good for 19. <laughs> if you hear you look good for 19, guess what? You look like shit for 19. <laughs> Shouldn't hear it. I definitely embrace that I'm 40. I accept that I'm 40. I know this. It's over. It's over. No more medium t-shirts for this guy. No. Those days are long gone. Saturday rolls around, a buddy calls you up. Hey, we getting drunk tonight? Uh, we're not. You can. What are you doing? Well, there's a two-hour dateline is what I'm gonna do. I gotta solve a murder with Lester Holt. That's what's my Saturday. I don't wanna come off as grim or negative, but once I turn 40, I accept death a little more. Because you know when you're 20, you're 30, you want to backpack Europe, you want to skydive, you want to experience life. Once I turn 40, I'm like, anytime now, honestly. I am tired all day. I am exhausted. I daydream about lying down under things. I'm like, right there at that table. I could lie down under that table. I'd be very comfortable. <laughs> this is what I truly mean, though. If I go to a gas station, I swipe my card at the pump, and then it says, please come inside, see a tenant. I'd rather die than go inside and see that attendant. <laughs> I'd rather get in my car and drive three miles to another gas station than walk 10 yards in your piece of crap place of business because you can't fix the pump. I'll take death. <laughs> it definitely took me 40 years to realize where I stand politically. I think some people know right out of the gate. Some folks are influenced by their parents. Me, it took me 40 years. You know, somebody's like, nowadays somebody's like, hey, what's your, uh, what's your take on the death penalty? How do you feel about the presence of the United States in the Middle East? What's your stance on abortion? Here's my take on all those and more. I don't give a shit. None of those things apply to my daily life. I don't know anybody on death row. The Middle East been fighting for thousands of years. We're not going to change that. And thank God my daughter's not old enough to fuck. So I just don't care about any of those things, truly. Here's the pressing issues in my life. My back's going. My vision's going. My wife doesn't think I give her enough back massages. I've been putting off an oil change for two months. Is my engine going to blow today? I don't know. I'll roll the dice again. My daughter's three years old, and she won't stop spreading her legs in public. These are the issues that keep me up at night, guys. <laughs> it's true. It's like, yeah, what the, what the, come on. A lot of beautiful girls in Montreal. Beautiful. A lot. Don't get cocky. By the way, to any single ladies, know this right now, girls. I don't shed a tear for single girls. I'm tired of girls. It's hard out there. It's really difficult to meet a guy. It's tough to meet a man. Is it? Go outside. They're everywhere. <laughs> Pick up a rock, throw it, you'll hit a dude. <laughs> Here's a challenge, girls, go out when nobody's out. You'll see guys, go get gas at midnight, it's a guy. Go to a pharmacy four in the morning, oh, it's another guy. Go take a piss in the woods, you hear a branch snap, that's gotta be a guy. <laughs> I have daughter, daughter, and I'll tell you, now that I got a girl, I feel bad for ladies, I truly feel bad for girls. Girls are forced to grow up so quick. Think about this, what's the first toy a little boy gets? Gun, truck, bike, that's fun, right? What's the first toy a little girl gets? Another little baby girl. <laughs> that's messed up. Hey, I'm a baby, I'm having so much fun. Well, time to grow up, baby, here's your baby. <laughs> but I, I just got here. <laughs> what's that kitchen set for? Get in there, you gotta learn how to bake cookies. Even by the laws of nature, when does a girl become a woman? Technically, fifth, sixth grade. Remember the day the teacher comes in, separates a class? Life changes after that day. Teacher comes in, all right, the girls, follow me. Gonna have a little talk. Girls get up, what, what's going on? Is there a rainbow outside or? We seeing puppies? Girls come back 20 minutes later. Oh my God, I'm so scared. Hey, you should be. You're a kid one minute going down a slide on a jungle gym. Next thing you know, you're in a cold classroom with a teacher. You're gonna be bleeding once a month pretty much the rest of your life. Sorry, I'm gonna be bleeding? Oh yeah. From where? Right there. Is it gonna hurt? Not you, but everyone around you. <laughs> I have a daughter, I have a boy on the way. I wanna do my best to impart upon them some words of wisdom, some shortcuts in life. Something, for example, my father taught me when I was very young. He grew up in New York City. We spent time on the East Coast. I grew up in Pittsburgh, surrounded by everybody. My father said, Steve, you never judge the people as a whole. You always judge the individual. That's how you go through life. And I'll tell my kids the same thing. I'm gonna tell them, for example. For example, you can't hate all Jewish people. It's awful. Of course you can hate a Jewish person. You got a bad experience, but it's completely unfair to hate all of 
Wall Street, the banking industry, the courting industry, television, film, Hollywood, self, doctors, lawyers, essentially our legal system, any Federal Reserve, any sports commissioner, any landlord or property owner, the mass media, Southern Connecticut, Northern Jersey, Upper East Side, West Side of New York City. You can't hate all that. Thank you, Montreal. Good night. God bless you all. Thank you.